Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle here again today. Yeah, I know, it's a Windows laptop. What the heck are you doing, Dio? Well, if you've watched some of my other videos on fr my Windows frustrations, you'll know that my HP, uh, my tried and true uh, podcasting machine, has bit the farm. It is done. It is gone uh, and properly recycled. So uh, I'm setting up a new to me T530, a ThinkPad T530. That's what this is. And uh, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to walk you through, if you have a Windows machine, how do you get MX on your machine? This first video, before I start putting MX on this computer, I need to make a USB stick uh, from Windows from the MX Media. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Now the first step is finding out what media you want. So I'm going to open my Chrome browser here, and I'm already on the MX Linux homepage, and I can download or torrent the latest ISO if I want. But we also have um, snapshots and respins. Now what is this? Snapshots and respins. Snapshots are done monthly by one of the community members named Adrian. Uh, he uh, is maintainer of the MX Snapshot utility, and every month he generates 64-bit and 32-bit ISOs with the Snapshot utility that have all the latest updates attached to them. Uh, and you can see that there is a January update already with all of the updates, and this one will include the Debian 8.7 update that's already come down. So I'm going to download this ISO uh, and try the January uh, one. And when it's downloaded, I'll show you how to turn that into a USB from Windows. Okay, guys, the ISO is finished downloading. Now, we need a tool to make the live USB from the Windows environment. Now, if you're in a Linux environment or an MX environment, I would say uh, you could try UNET Booting, or if you're in MX or Annex world, uh, our live USB maker tool. But in Windows, we need something that, that for sure supports the MX bootloader, and the Annex bootloader for that matter, and that is a tool called Rufus. Rufus here um, is an interesting tool for creating live USBs. It has a lot of options and features. Um, it supports a direct write image mode, uh, like a DD type system, if you know what that is, uh, to turn to make a read-only, make I call it a disk on a stick, a read-only file system on a USB stick. Bad news is you can't use persistence features with that mode, but the good news, uh, but it almost always boots. Uh, we're going to use the ISO image mode uh, to create a proper live USB that we can use the, an the MX and Annex live persistence features on. Now I've already downloaded this tool, so I'm going to close that down and I'm going to open up my downloads folder. And you're going to see the Rufus tool here. Okay, now I'm going to close the file manager because I've also discovered that um, the file manager is enough to lock the, the, the USB drive. So you close the file manager and now the USB drive is free to be written on. So we're going to do this. Uh, here's where you choose the drive. I only got one installed, so it's here. Uh, I'm going to leave the default for here, but you could use a GPT scheme for UEFI boots. I think I'm going to try the default. My computer does boot UEFI. Um, so we'll see what happens uh, doing that. Leaving it that way. It should, be, it should be okay since the whole file system is going to be FAT32. Uh, this is fine. Drive label. I've tried actually try changing this drive label, but it always changes back to MX Live. So I'm going to leave it here for now. And here's the important part. We're going to select the mode. ISO image. Now DD is that other mode I told you about, the read-only file system disk on a di on a stick. Uh, ISO image is what we want, and we're going to choose the ISO image and the January image that we just downloaded. And we're going to hit the start button. And here it's going to give you another uh, another chance to change modes one more time if you chose if you think you chose the wrong one. There's some explanation here, but by and large, if you want to use persistence features. The ISO image mode is the one you want. If you have trouble with that mode and you need something that is has a even higher chance of booting, I'm not saying the other one doesn't boot. I'm just saying the DD mode is more of a failsafe. You can try that. I would wait for a second try on that one though. So I'm gonna click OK on there. Warning: all the data will be destroyed. Yes, it wipes the partition table on the device and starts over. Just so you know. Click OK now. If you do, if if I've used Rufus already on this system, but if you haven't, it will then ask you if you want. To, it will possibly ask you to download 
uh, a couple more files uh, to support this our bootloader, the Sys, Sys Linux 6.03 bootloader. Just say yes to the question. I've already done it. It's already installed on here. It's not going to ask me for that because it's already done it, but it will detect it. And this is why you want to use Rufus rather than uh, some other tools out there because they if, if they just don't support our bootloader. So, okay. And now it's going to do its thing. Now I've run this a couple of times now just in preparation for the video. This is going to take about four minutes. So I'm going to stop the recording and be back in a minute. Okay guys, we're back in recording again. Should be getting close to wrapping up the, the, the writing of this uh, ISO to the media. It's taken about four minutes on past attempts. Let's see how close we get this time. There it goes. Now the Linux FS file is the main media of the file system. It's a gig by itself. So that's why it takes so long to copy that particular file. Um, so right now it's installing uh, all of our other bootload stuff, and it's done. And there we have the ready mark again. So this file's done, or this stick's done. You can see it in here. It's uh, all the files are are set up. We got boots. We got UFIs. It should boot just fine. But anyway, that's how you make the live USB for an MX or an Antix for that matter. Live USB from MS Windows. For tips, tricks, how tos, head over to mxlinux.org or throw up a post. At forum.mxlinux.org, this is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great day.